Welcome to the Crypto Campfire. Asking the questions no one ever needed answers to. Mitch and the Professor. Featuring special guest, Brandon Cooper. Hey guys, welcome back to the Crypto Campfire Podcast. This is the Professor. And Mitch. And today we're going to be talking with Brandon Cooper, founder and CEO of AFID. Before we start talking to Brandon, let's grab that crypto news from the Crypto Gent. Thanks, Professor. Hello, Crypto Campfire listeners, and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News in a Flash with the Crypto Gent. Corporate documents reveal new details about the ouster of Bitmain, co founder Ketchwin McCree Azan. Palestinian militant group has received 3,370 bitcoins in donations since 2015, and DigiX DAO votes to liquidate $64 million treasury with only 52 votes. That's the Crypto Crypto News in a flash with the Crypto Gent, and it's back to you, Professor. Thanks a lot, Crypto Gent. Mitch, uh, you warming up at all there? Oh, I'm, I'm cozy, man. I got my sweat. I got my, uh, I got my favorite sweatshirt on from my buddy Clint Westwood. Nice. And I got my nice warm coat, so I'm uh, I'm cozy, and I got a nice nice cold beer, and I got two good bros in front of me. So let's do this, man. This is awesome. I'm oh, yeah. uh, I'm excited. Had a good day today. Froze my ass off, but you know what? Heat's in the tools, right? Hey, it's good for you. It's good for you. <laughs> it is. You know, my hey, my wife says, well, you know, how do you work out in this cold? Don't your legs get cold? And I'm like, no. She goes, well, I- Hey, your fingers? I'm like, well, maybe a little bit. I mean, you're moving, you know, and you're working. <laughs> I'm not just sitting there picking my butt, you know? Yeah, you work faster. I guarantee you that much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely work fast. Oh, yeah. Eats in the tools. That's, that's not a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> it really not a joke at all. No. So uh, we met Brandon in Los Angeles at Crypto Invest Summit. Yeah. And we actually did a little live show with him. Um, we got photobombed by Peter McCormick during that process. Yeah, we, we that lost was our awesome. connection during that process. It was an interesting time, but we got through it. But we did. I'm excited to finally get a chance to sit down and get a little bit deeper and hear about Efit a little bit more. Heck yeah, I like the I like the beard thing you got going, bro. It's a little thicker than it was uh, in LA. Yeah, man, a little something. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get it. You know, I want it a little thicker, but we'll see. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it comes with time. I mean, you know, it'll get. <laughs> <laughs> when it gets gray then you're in trouble it's all, it's, it's the george, you got the george Clooney going on it's all good you know <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i wish anyway uh, <laughs> george Clooney. i'm just gonna i'm just gonna get you a george Clooney t-shirt mitch oh god here we go <laughs> <laughs> i want to wear my i want to wear my professor t-shirt yeah, there you go well i'll just get you a professor t-shirt but i'll put Clooney on the back you know like a jersey there you go. There yeah, you go. That's the, move. All set. that's the move. Exactly. Exactly. So Brandon, good to have you on the show. Welcome. Let's, before we start getting into AFIT, I'm, I want to hear a little bit about your background. So how did you actually get into crypto in the first place? Yeah, I got into this. I first heard about it um, in like 2010, 20, 2009, 2010. I started investing in it in 2017. Really just, uh, my, my, the first introduction, I went to E Trade, thinking that it, it was it could be traded like a stock. I didn't know what I was doing, and then because uh, I saw one stock, I think it's GBTC, it went up to like nine hundred dollars or something, and because uh, <laughs> it had Bitcoin oh, in the name, so people were just buying yeah, it. Right, was like this must be Bitcoin. Right, and it ended up I think it dropped back down to like five dollars or something crazy, but it went up really really high. But anyway, wow. uh, I downloaded Coinbase <laughs> like most people. And uh, I just started buying Bitstamp. I think was the first exchange that I used. I did I did a wire. I just did a and and, and bought some uh, Ripple. At the time, it was called just Ripple, now XRP. But yeah, mm-hmm. nice, nice. So you've been there for a little while. Uh, I got I started getting into it in 2017. As far as like purchasing it as well, uh, I mined a little bit in 2016, but just a very very small amount. So mm-hmm. uh, the 2017 time frame was definitely an exciting one especially going into early 2018 and all those altcoin runs and all the massive moonshots coming out of left field. Yep. I mean, that was talk about a euphoric time, man. That was exciting. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I'm feeling, I'm feeling that uh, buzzing again here. I think we're getting, 
getting close for it's some. It's gonna happen again. It's it's just okay. it's gonna go into okay. waves. Yeah. Uh, in, in my opinion. You think? Coast yeah, seats? yeah. No, Coast no seats? question. It's just it's you have to have poise, long game. Uh, anyone that's in it for the, the quick bam, 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 they're gonna lose. The weak hands will they'll throw a while earlier. Well, I I definitely agree with that. There's no question. Um, you know, I think I I threw out a tweet today that said, uh, you know, all this volatility. You know, because I I think um, oh goodness, I can't remember his name. M- not McCormick. Um, McAfee? Anyways. Yeah, McAfee. Yeah, no. No, no, no. It was uh, F- Phil, I think, was his name. It was a guy that we had on our show. Um, and I'm trying to – just the name escapes me right now. But he mentioned about um, 401Ks and putting cryptocurrencies into, you know, taking your 401Ks and, you know, uh, putting them into cryptocurrencies. And someone said something about the volatility. And I'm like, huh. Who's worried about volatility if you're in this for the long haul? If you think about a 401k or you think about a, a traditional asset, you know, yep. you're not looking at yep. that over two years. You're looking at that over 15. You can't even pull until you're 59. So, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. So, if you think about crypto in that regard, in the long run, I think the volatility is going to be our friend. Indeed. Indeed. And, and we sure. you know the U.S. dollar is a piece of shit. So, I mean... Right. <laughs> it's not, it's not going at all. You, but it's only declining. No, it, exactly. I haven't seen the American. Well, I, I can't remember the last time somebody said the American dollar actually went up in value. Yep. <laughs> kudos to kudos to crypto, baby. Yep. Kudos to crypto. Yep, indeed. <laughs> I should have brought a beer. <laughs> so not to mention, not to mention that crypto assets have have been the most. They've all performed uh, traditional assets multitudes of times. You know, in just in the last 10 years and since cryptos actually became a thing, have well outperformed traditional assets. So, I mean, and you that, know, the long term is where it's at. I mean, and that's at, uh, I don't know what Bitcoin's market penetration is. I'm going to guess 6%. But, um, I mean, most people still don't know what it is, right? And it's already a $600 right. billion dollar, uh, as far as the cap is concerned, the capitalization, you know, of the whole industry. It's a baby a baby exactly. right now and i mean that's like the bigger it gets the more stable it becomes you know the less volatility the less volatility you have you know you start getting you know the multi-trillion market cap which is easily doable you know over the next few years um you, you all that volatility goes away at least it, it becomes less erratic if you will you know it, it kind of it starts maybe evening out and we kind of get more stability i think i think you're still going to see a lot of change in in price from a usd standpoint mm-hmm. but i think most of that's going to come from the change in value of the dollar itself you know what is probably going to be just rapid decline at some point because as traditional fiat currencies start phasing out their value is going to go down which is going to technically make the price of bitcoin against the dollar go higher even if it's not actually worth more as a commodity or rather an asset to trade, but mm-hmm. you know, we're going to, we're going to see some interesting stuff on that front, I think too. Yeah, I agree. I mean, recessions are going to play, play into it, you know, with the, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting what forces this way over to crypto. If we could just keep the manipulative, manipulative little paws out of it from our governments um, and from all the whales out there manipulating the shit out of the price, Yeah, you know, I think that would be a huge benefit to everybody in the long term. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like, you know, again, the same concept applies as it grows, that becomes uh, less and less possible. You can still manipulate, but you have to have much more power to manipulate as much. Um, So that becomes uh, less effective over time. So, I mean, at at the same time, uh, the big players and the entities that are trying to do this become more powerful over time too. But, I'd like to think that it will eventually kind of balance itself out and form a somewhat stable ecosystem. Yeah, I agree. What do you guys think is, uh, uh, who are your top picks? Which, which top, give me your top five in order of the ones that that you think are going to prosper over the long haul. Cryptos. And I'll give you mine mine too. All right. All right. So I'm going to preface this with I haven't paid very close attention to the altcoin world for about the past six months just because we've had so much time tied up in Cerebro and the campfire. But Me um, neither. 
I, I think that number one, Bitcoin is going to see the the biggest as far as like total market cap increase, um, mainly just because when people come into crypto, the first thing that they've already heard about is Bitcoin. So they are, are oftentimes going to go to what's familiar or they're at least going to buy Bitcoin to get their altcoins. So I think number one, we're going to get that. I think Ethereum and Litecoin are still going to run. I know there's a lot of bad stuff mm-hmm. going, going around about Ethereum, about whether they're going to be able to scale, whether proof of stake is going to work and mm-hmm. Casper is ever going to happen and all that. Right. But um, I think Ethereum and Litecoin are both going to run pretty much like they did in 2017 you know, right alongside Bitcoin. Um, For altcoins, I feel like we're going to see a privacy coin thing. Verge is always really good at getting like hype pumps uh, just because their community is so supportive. So we might see that run, but I would speculate on Monero having a better privacy coin. Monero and Dash. Yeah, Dash is coming around too. So um, I would put Monero as my number four. And then Waves, I'm going to say, I think for... I could I'd throw like a hundred of them in the fifth spot right there because there's so many of those altcoins that I think are just going to go astronomically crazy. I, I think Tron's going to pump too, but I don't know. I think I think those would be my top five as far as what I would gamble on. Gotcha. I don't. Justin Sun is the what I worry about with Tron because I like Tron and I was like, eh. right. I like the technology and I like what potential they have and. I even think they have some potential that they don't even realize yet. That's the worst part. And I think it goes right into what you're saying about like Electron, but are they the right people to make it be mm-hmm. what it needs to be? Mm-hmm. And I think, I think Justin, I think Justin's maturing though. I, I think he's growing with this space. If you, if you look at him two years ago and you look at him today, um, he's different. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think he's, he's starting to mature with the space. And as time goes on, I think that maturity is going to continue to evolve for him um, and, and actually help him in the, in the, in the long run, you know, I mean, his, his dealings with Alibaba and stuff mm-hmm. like that, yeah. I, I think um, really, really will help benefit him in the long run. And, you know, the more, the more positive energy he surrounds himself with in the space, I think is really going to have an effect on that as well. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, once you get, you know, once you get away from the, the hype bullshit and, and the games people play and get down to the really nitty gritty, I think that when he can actually do that a hundred percent, I think you're going to see a big turn in Tron and you're going to see see a big turn with him. Yeah, I think the big the BitTorrent acquisition was huge uh, because oh, they, they sure. grabbed a, a big chunk of uh, an already decentralized thinking community and just yes. put them under their umbrella. It was because uh, they they went into a war, as you guys already know, with Neo, uh, and then that yep. went into bidding war. Um, so yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what they do with uh, exactly. Yeah, you know, I think the hardest thing for him to overcome is going to be his past. Correct. To be honest with you, you know, to get out of that uh, fanboy club stigma that that surrounds him now because of the last two years, um, I think is going to be his biggest hurdle. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And going back to the BitTorrent thing, I think there's, I I think a lot of people don't even realize like how big that really is. Cause you know, everybody, all, all that Twitter says all day is, well, okay, so cool. Do you get paid? a little bit while you're seeding and you also get a little bit faster download speeds. What's the point? Who gives a shit? But what they, like you said, number one, they captured that portion of the decentralized uh, mindset community. But on top of that, they also have the fundamental architecture to build a distributed um, internet. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they talk about Tron talks about, you know, internet web 4.0 as being their, their platform and what they're really trying to build and that you know this really solidifies that they can go out and they can actually build decentralized like web hosting and stuff like that just Mm -hmm. at a very basic level but there's so many different intricacies that could go along with that with social media and et cetera et cetera there's a lot that needs to be built and it's you know but their white paper is like what 15 years out or some shit or their roadmap is i mean it's a long pretty crisis Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you definitely as an investor I never invest of where a company is. I I'll invest where I see the company going because, exactly. uh, you know, if, if you're in position and one announcement is made, everyone else would be scrambling around and you've already put yourself in place to win. Um, 
that's what I see with a, a, a few different um, uh, altcoins, which would lead me to I would say Bitcoin, I would agree, would be number one. I think uh, Ethereum will kind of be like the app store where people can build upon it. More people will learn Solidity. Um, XRP. So I like Ripple better than I like XRP. I think Ripple is uh, goes against what Bitcoin was created for. But I don't think that uh, Ripple has to lose in order for Bitcoin to win as well. Right. Yeah, I mean they're not they're not really competing use cases realistically. They're not. They're not. They're not in the way. I mean just let them do what they do. Uh the yep. uh, it's just concerning about the price for um XRP uh mm-hmm. with all of the announcements and everything that they've been able to do <laughs> and they they can't seem to break They should have broke a dollar. They can't even break a dollar. Um that's very concerning to me uh as an investor. So uh you know and I think they could flip the switch and open certain corridors and and ex- explode i mean they have what sbi they have a, a, a japanese uh consortium of banks 61 banks or whatever money tap app all of these different things uh and then a MoneyGram acquisition i mean a partnership excuse me uh where they have they, they invested like 30 million dollars into it with the potential to get 20 20 million dollars more in the next couple of years um that's huge because they're second in remittances uh behind western union uh, but still no no price movement uh that's a huge announcement for the, the industry so but uh, it I just think, makes you wonder don't it it just makes you wonder if something's wrong right uh either ripple doesn't really care about the price going up uh or they're just doing things on the back end to uh, position it for five to ten years out uh, but with all of that said I, I still have them number three i think number four is going to be neo because the president of china just uh, announced that he wants them to be, he wants them to lead blockchain technology in China. And oh, right. I, didn't as, catch that. I, I saw him endorsing blockchain in general, but I didn't catch the NEO. NEO went up 100%. It went up, because um, last I had checked, it was like $6, $7. It's up to 12 bucks now. Jesus and, Christ, when was this? Was uh, this today? In this the last week, week. Within this week. Within this week. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I haven't opened Binance in like three weeks. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn, I need to- and as, you, <laughs> as you know, they, because they started off as Ant shares and they went up to about 180 bucks or so. And they have a uh, hundred million in their supply. So I think that's one to grab one because people that are building on Neo can use pre-existing programming languages. So regular everyday developers can go ahead and start building on them. Uh, right. I, I expect over the long run, I mean, I'm no financial guy, but I expect minimally Neo to go a grand a pop, easy, maybe even ten thousand nice. a pop, uh, just because of China alone. And then, wow. uh, that's yeah, that, that's a that's a pretty steep prediction. But I just I'm watching China. I watch China a lot. And then uh, that's all right. Yeah, I made a lot of money off Neo. Yeah, yeah, Neo <laughs> back to the last year. It'll go back. I think Neo will go back up because people they they suck at marketing. They don't really. They haven't any any partnerships. They haven't talked about anything like that. They're letting the community grow on its own with their smart economy angle, uh, which will lead me to uh, my number five would be V Chain because V Chain uh, they have um, yeah V Chain is 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 a low price. Their their price pretty low, but they have BMW. Um, they have a few other big companies that they've done business with where they'd be, uh, working with them for the cars and such doing logistics. So we'll see, but those are my picks. Did you ever play cards as a kid? Cards, like uh, playing cards? Yeah. I yeah. still play. Yeah. You ever, you ever play go fish? Yep. Go fish. That's the first one. <laughs> I, need to, I need to do that shit with my portfolio. <laughs> Go fish, motherfucker, because I got that. <laughs> you know, the funny thing with Bitcoin, to me, a lot of this stuff, the top, I'd say the top three, right, come down to um, a popularity contest. Now, <laughs> you look at the, the big three automakers, right, Ford, GM, Chrysler. You look at those three, and everybody varies on their opinion of all of them. 
of the three of them, right? You got Ford people, you got Chevy people, and you got general, uh, you got uh, Chrysler people. Okay, I'm thinking that Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin are going to fall under those that same pretense. Um, it, you know, they're all good in their own way, right? Like Ford, to me, I'm a Ford guy when it comes to trucks, but I'm a Chevy guy when it comes to cars. You know, so. I guess that all depends. Um, if I were to put those three in order, it's kind of hard to break that order of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Mm-hmm. And then after that, um, if we, if I was sticking with coins, I would have to say um, probably Digibyte. Okay. And then um, after that would be, you know, Digibyte and XMR are, are tied for, for my number four. Um, and then my, my number five would be, um, beats coin. Beats coin, uh, the uh, music one. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because I, I really believe that given time, I think that that's going to replace a lot of YouTube. It's going to replace iTunes. It's going to replace, um, a lot of prime music, stuff like that, that people have to pay extensively for, Mm -hmm. um, memberships to get decent music. Mm-hmm. or to get decent videos or to have uninterrupted videos, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I think, think the fact that beats being decentralized is going to be a big, big factor in their success when it comes to that portion of entertainment, so to speak. Gotcha. Um, so they're on, they're definitely my, probably my number five. Um, and I mean, there's a lot more other ones that would fight for fifth and sixth place, but I'm pretty mm-hmm. solid with those. That's, you know, but like I said, I, I made a lot of money with Neil last year. I not, I shouldn't say a lot of money. I had a lot of fun with Neil. How's that? You know, yeah. I've played the ups and downs pretty well and got lucky. That's, that's all I was. Yeah. And the only reason I bought Neil was because I liked the name because I liked the movie, the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. So it's all Keanu's Be fault. Honest. God damn that's it. Right. That's right. <laughs> So, uh, so Brandon, let's uh, get, get over to AFID real quick. Yeah. I remember a little bit about it from California, but I, I don't really know how far we got into talking about it. So just for the people listening, why don't you just start from the beginning of how it came to be and what you guys are all about, and then maybe kind of tell us how it works. Yeah, certainly. Uh, the, an aphid is an insect that can clone itself. It can reproduce at a very fast rate. It doesn't have to have a partner to have a baby, basically. Um, so the way that it ties into our business model is uh, we've created an ecosystem that allows a person to digitize themselves into a bot, clone themselves into a bot. And when it works, we as AFIT pay you. So your bot will be able to already, it'll be pre-trained. So you don't have to train it to do anything. We already train it for you. It'll do various tasks like chat support, e-commerce checkout, and then we pay you a commission for it. Uh, the idea and I'll say, it sounds alien-like, but uh, I was working for a big tech company for six years, and uh, we were working to death, uh, over, you know, 40 hours a week, overtime. Uh, the call volume was heavy, and uh, I literally was just sitting there saying, man, it has to be a way. I wish I could just clone myself and have it work for me while I'm at the beach. And uh, I got a pin out, started constructing it, I looked at artificial intelligence and I said, okay, well, the best way for this to be possible it has to be digital. And uh, started working on a project and lo and behold, uh, created AFIT. That's crazy. So what's the difference between actually cloning yourself into a bot and you just making a whole bunch of just different bots and making them work? What's, what's the difference that makes this special? Well, it allows a person to leverage their time For instance, a a person has to go to work. They're trading time for money. So when you go to work, you get paid, right? But over here, we're basically paying you to man the machine. So a typical, if we were Apple or we were Microsoft, we would hire you, pay you a salary to do X amount of work. So what AFID does is we we take that model, but we say, well, you don't have to work 40 hours a week to do it. Just oversee your machine and we'll still pay you for it. Um, so what this does is it's going to allow you to spend more time with your family, uh, more time with your friends, 
if you want your bot to sell your own products and services, you'll be able to do that in one of our future phases as well. Um, so uh, a lot of people repeat a lot of the same things to their clients. You know, like if I, hey, does this come in this size or do I need this? And they repeat the same thing hours and hours. And collectively, it's over 200 hours a month that you're talking to your clients when your robot can just filter that information out for you. You get an email and now that customer is ready to go because he's, he or she has already been filtered out. Uh, so it's a leverage play. The, the, the best analogy that I can use is um, uh, Tesla. They have the robo taxis. With the robo taxis, you buy a Tesla, uh, just like you would uh, a customer would uh, summon Uber. The driver comes and picks them up or whatever, takes them to the destination. So with their robo taxi model, they're gonna Tesla is gonna pay you uh, when you add your car to the automation fleet. Meaning, I buy a Tesla. My car automatically leaves my house, goes to pick someone up, drops them off. Tesla will pay me for that. We're doing the exact same thing, but we're just doing it digitally. So instead of uh, your robot driving you and dropping you off, uh, it's doing a digital task for you, whatever it is that we assign to your bot. It's really the most, one of the most revolutionary business models you guys are going to see once we go live. That's amazing. I mean, it's, it sounds crazy up front, but when you really start thinking more deeply about it, it, it just kind of only makes sense. You know, we've, we talked about a few shows back, the concept of technologies transcending other technologies. And the example was um, cell phones, you know, it got to the point where we had the ability to do so much while we were mobile, but our cars hadn't evolved that fast. You know, we still have to drive them. So yeah. even though our technology allows us to be that efficient, we can't, unless we have, you know, somebody driving us. So having automated uh, transportation and things like that, let us take the next step into capitalizing on that resource that we now have, be it cell phones or whatever. So why not find other uses to capitalize on that even further? You know, it just kind of seems like the next logical step, I guess. And I just hadn't, something I hadn't thought about before. It's really cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Kind of reminds me of that movie, uh, Renaissance Man. Yeah. With, um, with Robin Williams. Remember yeah, that movie? Yeah. yeah. The artificial intelligence. And so we're going to have something like that, you know, a, a robot pressing our laundry and cooking our meals right. and stuff like that. I, God, I wish I was younger to be able to see more of the technological future. I mean, and to witness it. I, it, it, it may be something to witness and it may be, you may be lucky to not see it. Because, <laughs> this is true. Boston this is Dynamics. True. It could go both ways, couldn't it? The company Boston Dynamics, they they're building these oh God. robots. They can Terrifying. jump they can jump up and open doors and hold the door for you. And I mean when you think about iRobot the movie, I mean they're they're gonna be robot yeah, cops they're close. And like, <laughs> compared I mean, Boston Dynamics, some of the shit that they're building is crazy. You know, you're seeing yeah. they are they're becoming resistant to being pushed over and things like that. They're getting good at that. Uh, balancing code and, and getting that all to work. And my, what, my favorite thing though is the parody videos on YouTube where the robots like lose control or start taking yeah. over and attacking the people and <laughs> they go viral because everybody. Yeah, that's funny it. shit right there, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> that's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I try not to think too seriously about that in the future because I know the possibility for stuff I'll be like dead that is first. great. But yeah, you kind of hope, right? But at the same time, yeah. look at the last 20 years and then compare the change in the last 20 years uh, to the change in the 20 years before that and before that and look at how exponentially faster we're growing and you know you we're like right, right at the knee of the freaking curve and shit's about to go crazy real fast and then we're going to have you know like any any paradigm shift like that you're going to have a setback and something's going to go fucking wrong and we're going to reset what are your what are your guys's thoughts on um like in the past right technology seems to be like evolving really fast right and if you look at when when technology really started, a lot of this stuff has existed for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. But what do you what are your thoughts on the fact that the powers that be said, you know what, the world's just not ready for it? Do you think that exists? Yeah. And to what degree? Yeah, uh, I, I believe because you know the military is already thirty years more 
uh, technologically advanced than we are. So they know a lot about, you know, cloaking and, uh, you know, they say the, uh, that, that was supposed to be what God Osama bin Laden is really like this uh, invisible, they know how to do these kind of things. I think they want to capitalize off it from the dollar amount too. Um, but yeah, if you introduce something too early, it, uh, well, you, you just never know what they're up to, right? You don't know what they're up to. I think they have a lot of ulterior motives. I don't want to go too deep on it, but, you know, they, they do a lot of, uh, you know, things that we might not. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're just waiting for the right time to do certain things. But, I mean, you have like Alexa and all these different things that, uh, that listen to our conversations and people. I mean, you have to think. I mean, come on, you don't think that they, they can't get access to the information and listen into what families and using that for data and advertisement and just general spying. I don't trust any of it, to be honest with you. Right. Well, I mean, we've created the society that everything is now connected because you're, you yourself are physically connected into the internet of things with like your Fitbits and et cetera. Right. And people got your medical examination, Wi-Fi toilets. And yeah. you know, it's, it, you are now part of the system and your data is the, the whole thing driving the, your data is the fucking hamster. Let's put it that way. It's the matrix. You know, it's all about data. Exactly. It's crazy. And people don't, I don't know if they just don't care or they don't get it or a combination thereof, but it's, I don't know. The future looks pretty interesting, but it's going to be sketchy if you're not careful. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's a, a big part. I mean, you have Elon Musk who is warning everyone about AI and he does with Neuralink where he wants to put things in your brain, attach it to your ear and, you know, take these, uh, all of these nodes or whatever in your brain and it reads the information to the app. And I mean, you can't talk about you fear AI and then, you starting it off with these kind of things. I mean, you're ultimately handing the baton over for people to do more and more things. And I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I just hope it's not a, a puppet move where they have him moving in that kind of direction. Because Neuralink is is a company to to look out for. Um, hopefully, things don't get too dangerous. That's why I, I, if people complain about robots taking our jobs. It's a big reason why I created AFIT is to say, yeah, robots should take our jobs, but we should uh, get paid for it. And as long as you're assigned a bot, it doesn't change anything in the, the U.S. economy. Uh, why do we have to manually be there at work? Just assign a bot that would do what we would typically do, and we can actually enjoy life because uh, five days a week, 40 hours a week is 1992. And uh, we're going to disrupt that completely. Those days are over. As far as oh, yeah. I'm concerned. I mean, there's, like you say, everybody's worried about your jobs going away and it's just a shift, right? You're, you're going to have less, requ less need to work. The, the world is going to have less need for physical labor of any sort, whether it's sitting at a desk or actually working in a field. It's, it's just going to transition. And then you have systems like blockchain that allow a, I, guess, I would say trustable, you know, but trustless system where machines can transact and values are consistent no matter what, and nobody can touch it, nobody can fuck with it. And so you can have that automated ecosystem where it just all happens without people, right? Like we don't have to be involved in this. You know, once you get AI working properly and you have blockchain to the point where you can have a fast chain that's also secure and it's stable, you know? So yeah, it's just, it's just a matter of time. And then as soon as we get there, it's going to be crazy. We're just going to have this, we always talk about that one huge uh, connected ecosystem and you know between uh, DAOs for the government and uh, cryptocurrencies for money and all that coming together it's going to be it's going to be one big fucking sci-fi movie <laughs> yep make me one that drives a screw or can drive a hammer a nail and put together a cabinet or um, a beautiful mantle for somebody's fireplace and I'll join <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the kind of work that I do, yeah. and I need someone to do that shit yeah. for me. So, <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. let's there, do there's it. There's always going to be a place for, like, some of the skilled artisans and things like that with, mm -hmm. you know, th there are certain things that technically you can replicate with robotics at, at great expense, but they're still not the same exactly because you just can't achieve certain things without that. 
It's the human touch. I, it's the human touch. Yeah, you know, you can still get close, but even then you just have the mentality of, I don't want the thing that was made by the machine. I want the thing that this guy made himself because that mm-hmm. becomes a more special thing. And the further we go in the future, the more rare that becomes. True human passion and true um, pride, right? Certain things you can't duplicate with a computer. Certain things you can't duplicate with a robot, right? You can't duplicate in its entirety that passion that we feel for what we do. You can't. Yeah, you can get something to create and you can get something to actually mundanely do the stuff that we mundanely do. But the true passion, I don't think you'll ever be able to really duplicate that of a true craftsman, whether that craft be computers, whether that craft be programming, whether it be, you know, artistry, drawing, painting, stuff like that. Yeah, you can make some beautiful things with digital um, artwork, but you still have that passion of the person behind it right now creating it. And I don't think AI can can mimic that yet. Yet. (laughs) <laughs> that's yeah. the key word that's right good times i don't know i mean i'm I'm excited for the future i'm looking forward to it i can't wait until i can uh, press a button and uh, manifest a cheeseburger with nanobot assemblers but, <laughs> you know we'll get there we'll get there <laughs> so dude i got a question for you so you were a guest on the steve harvey show yep and really? uh yeah it was uh maybe in june i think talk to me goose what happened yeah, uh long story short, I uh just there's people in the network and uh Steve has some guests on the on the show, uh, you know, for a particular topic and uh, you know, I want to talk about entrepreneurship and uh being a father and all these kind of so it was a variation of topics or whatever, but uh got to talk talk with him and he wants to meet up with uh the small group that he had there on the cast that day again, so I'll probably see him again, got to talk with his son. That's pretty cool. Did Good you experience. talk about crypto? No, nah, he isn't up on crypto. Oh, <laughs> what? You didn't talk about crypto? What <laughs> the didn't hell? talk about crypto. Nope. <laughs> so he's, I mean, he's All a great right. guy. You know, we got to like set that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got to set that up. We got to <laughs> talk to Steve Harvey about crypto. Yeah. Period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was cool for my son. I mean, he saw me on Fox and... Uh, uh, I think NBC. I guess my dad. That's my dad. Uh, that was the best part about it. He was telling the other little kids, "That's my dad. That's my dad." That was that's the best cool, part. Yeah. Of it. That's <laughs> we got yeah. us a TV star in here. Yeah. Yeah. I love Perfect. it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. So, um, I, I think we should do the. Uh, I guess he kind of already gave us his uh, moonshot token, though. So maybe not. Yeah. So Neo's the moonshot. Um, what's, what's, uh, let's go trending hashtags and see hashtag everything I ever wanted is trending right now. What's, uh, what's everything you ever wanted, Brandon? Everything I ever wanted is, um, the ability to, um, breathe freely is to wake up to the tick, uh, you know, to beat of my own drum, right. To have as much control of my time as possible is the single most important thing for me because I can better take care of uh, my family, my business, my health, uh, you know, relationship, whatever it is, uh, time is super, super valuable. So as long as I'm in that position, I think everything else takes care of itself. Traveling, right? Uh, that's, that's what I live for, man. I just want to wake up and breathe, right? You know what I mean? Meditate. If I, I want to meditate for four hours, six hours, you know, let's do it. There you go, man. So, yep. Brandon, you you gotta you gotta make us a you gotta make us a a, a professor duplicate that can edit our shows for us. So <laughs> there you go. we could just we could just do our shows and and the the there we the go bottle, <laughs> the bottle edit it for us and, and put it on all of the different social medias that we go on to. I think that would be insane. That's amazing. What yeah. do you think, professor? You guys can do that, that in like two weeks, three weeks, right? No easy. problem. Easy. 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 Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Easy, man. Yeah. Easy. Okay. So <laughs> listen, when are you coming to Detroit? Uh, I'll be there on Sunday. Sunday morning. On Sunday. Okay. And you're going to be here for a month. Just about. Yep. I have to, uh, I have to go to Boston and I have to go to New York and then Atlanta. So I'm doing okay. some traveling. 
Okay. So yeah. look at your calendar, and then uh, and then when you when you see a day that because I'm I'm self employed, thank God. At least I got that going for me. Um, let me know when you got a day and a day free, and we'll uh, we'll hang out, man. I I don't know how sure. how much you've spent in Detroit, but I've I've built a good portion of that city. Um, and all the sports venues and everything down. And I, I, I don't know if you've been through it that much, but I definitely yeah. be happy to give you a tour and we could have some beers and yeah. do, do a little yeah, sure. pub crawl of our own. Yeah, man, I'm with it. <laughs> all right. See, that sounds cool. Need to buy so, a fucking ticket from Michigan. Well, yeah. yeah. Duh. It's too cold to be flying to another cold place. If I'm flying, I'm going to be going somewhere warm, man. Oh, it'll be warm where we're at, brother. I promise you. That's true. The fire will be burning. That's a fact. It'll be hot where we're at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. What a great podcast. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we definitely got to do this again. And you know what? When you and I get together, we might do some live broadcasts on Twitter and, and just blast the hell out of there Twitter. For I'm, I'm completely down for that. You got to get him out there dropping some seed cards. I know, right? We got to get this guy in the adoption train. <laughs> I mean, come on. He's talking to Steve Harvey and didn't talk about crypto. Yeah, we, we definitely got to work on that, Brandon. I'm, I'm telling you. It's kind of disappointing, actually, because I'd be talking to the – it doesn't matter who yeah, I'm talking to. You would have been escorted by security by the time you were done. <laughs> okay. Maybe I get a little overworked about it, but you know what? You made an You would have made an impression. That's a fact. Yeah. Damn straight, he never would have forgot about crypto. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have bought Bitcoin either. <laughs> no, he probably would have bought Ethereum or, or Litecoin. Oh, yeah, there you go. Right, right. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, Litecoin is going to be like silver, I think. If, if we're comparing like Bitcoin to gold, then uh, I think Litecoin would probably be silver. Oh, yeah. I, it'll be um, right there with it. I mean, it works. I don't care what anybody says about Charlie Lee or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can think what you want. It's done now at this point. And it's still a working system, yeah. and it's yeah. a it's a decent thing. It's a decent coin that works. It's pretty quick. It's pretty inexpensive. It's probably not perfect, you know, but it's still a pretty early iteration yeah. of this whole process, you know. So it's going to do good. It's going to do great, and maybe it gets replaced by something else later. But I think we've got plenty of years of Litecoin ahead of us. Yep. Hell yeah. I mean, if 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 anybody out there isn't accumulating any of those top five that either one of us had mentioned and these prices, they're going to really be kicking themselves in another yeah. year or two. Was that, was yeah. that financial I mean, advice, Mitch? No, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what? Kicking your ass has got nothing to do with financial exactly. advice. That's your own dilemma. The not not <laughs> right? financial advice paddle. No, we don't do financial advice on here anyways. We just talk shit. Exactly. So Except buy Bitcoin, that's not financial now. advice. Buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin and use a coin flip ATM to yes. do it, damn yes. it. Brandon, you've ever used a crypto ATM? I have not. No? Find one. Yeah. There's, okay, so. We'll go to one when you're in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Damn straight. Uh, coin flip is actually in coin Chicago. Flip ATM. You out there. Coin flip. I, there I heard go. they have them in Royal Oak. They might. They've got them all over the U.S. They've got like 358 now. I think they're they're yeah. now number one in the U.S. of how many ATMs in the are world? Placed. Is it the I world? I was corrected. It is the world. Okay. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> Even yes. better. Nice. Even better. Cool shit. But yeah, so we'll definitely we'll definitely do that. We might even do a video when we do that. Hmm. Oh, this go. is gonna be a fun trip for you, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get you some crypto at some good prices. Have a few cocktails, enjoy some Detroit scenery. Oh man, you'd be like on vacation, but working. There you go. Then, then you, can work some, uh, you can work some bots into the ATMs for customer service, and you'll be good to go. There, there you go. go. Making right up on screen. Hell yeah! Damn Perfect. <laughs> All oh, right, dude. Such a pleasure having you on the show tonight, brother. Appreciate you guys having me. Thank you. No problem. We'll have to do this As again. Always. I'm looking forward to the next one, man. No coincidences, yeah, sure. baby. No coincidences. Not a bit. You know it. I'll talk to you soon, bro. Take it easy, guys. All yeah. right, man. Have a good night. All right, you guys have a good one. See you. All you right, too, you bro. Too. Peace. Wow. That was awesome. That was a good one. There was a few people from, from California that we really enjoyed talking to, and he was definitely one of them. We had, we had a really good time with him. Sure. And we ran into him at the eToro after party, too, which was cool. Yes. I really had, I guess I had forgotten, you know, kind of the main concept of AFID when we talked, I guess. We, we just interviewed Me so too. many people and all that, but I was, 
now that we can sit down and absorb it, I'm like, man, this is cool as shit. And I know a lot of people are going to come at it from the standpoint of, well, I mean, how scary is this? And like, what potential implications could there be for, you know, like the deep fakes concept and shit like that. Oh, so, Jesus. I mean, there's going to be all kinds of sides to this. And, but that's why I think, like we said, it's going to have to be done responsibly, cautiously, and with extreme care. I mean, how, how scary is it to walk down the street nowadays and not worry about getting hit by a car or a drunk driver or, you know, somebody texting? I mean, you know, it's at a certain point in, in, in life, people have to stop being fearful. Right. You just have to say, fuck it and go for it. And work towards making it better for mm-hmm. everybody, right? Instead of running the other direction, help yeah. fix it, help take it to the next level. Like if you if you see something make that you a think difference. is good, but it has some issues, you know, get in on the project right. and figure out how you can help. If you're not a programmer, it doesn't mean anything. You can help in nope. some way or another. Maybe a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> something or other. Maybe but, a little bit. Yeah, no, just take some initiative, I guess, is the takeaway from this whole thing. It's kind of like politics and governmental control, right? People, people go with the flow. Why? Because it's easy. It's easy to just follow the pack and you're protected by everybody else to a point, you know, you're protected from the elements, but when you stand out there on your own and you face the wind directly and you get the rain beating you in the face, cause you're not surrounded by all these people, it's a little bit different wake up call. But at the same time, when you get to the other side of that storm, the grazing that you got on that field is a lot better than having to follow another thousand people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you get fresh grass. How's that? <laughs> fresh grass for you. <laughs> That's it. Fresh grass for you. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, making the t-shirt as we speak. <laughs> nice. What a great podcast. This was a fun one, bro. It was a perfect end to a good day. Yeah, definitely a good podcast. Had fun. Oh, yeah. The only thing that can make you better is if there was an open bar and free sushi. Open bar right here. That counts. All right, guys, man, this was a great podcast. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We did immensely. We really enjoyed it. We enjoy being able to do this for you guys. Uh, We hope you all have fun with it. Uh, If you get a chance and you haven't, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, give us some ratings, you know, throw us some ratings out on YouTube and, and um, some of the other platforms that we're on to really help us out a lot. And uh, we look forward to the next episode that we get to you guys. And also I want to point out, make sure to go to CryptoCampfirePodcast.com and click on blog at the top right. Uh, Crypto J has been writing some really kick-ass blog articles for us. And uh, he's doing one a week, kind of doing a review of the episodes that we released that week. So If you haven't had a chance to catch the latest episode, you can just go on to the blog, um, read what he has to say. He's, he's an awesome writer and they're, they're funny sometimes too. So it's just good entertainment. So check it out. He just put a new one out on Tuesday. So hell yeah. Check that out. And guys, check out the seeds. Uh, Look at change angel seed map. Check out red cat lice, new designs. She's really just killing it. And there you go. All right, guys, have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Take it easy. Peace.